Hello everyone, so my name is Hussam bin Lazreg. I am uh, a PhD student at the University of Alberta and I'm writing a dissertation about uh, news translation, so how the news outlets, so for example when you're watching TV you want to know what's happening around the world so you watch certain news channels, right? And so I'm looking at how those news channels uh, translate the news coming from for example, the Middle East. So how do they translate, you know, speeches? How do they translate statements, you know, made by Arab political leaders, um, by, for example, uh, opponents, like political opponents? So I look at how the news translate the speeches done by those people. Um, and in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what I do exactly when I study those news outlets. So I'm going to start by showing you the first picture and that first picture has three components or have three screens. So you can see that it's the, the, the picture, the original one is in the middle and you can see how news outlets can show you just probably a small portion of reality or just a small side of reality. So looking at that picture, if I show you the right side, the extreme, the one on the right, what you see, you see just a soldier giving, you know, probably another soldier um, some water, like he's giving him water to drink. And so if I cut the other side of the picture, you can see that I'm just showing you a nice picture of a soldier giving water to another soldier, which is fantastic. However, if I show you the one on the extreme left, the other side, which is a little bit reddish on the, on the picture, what you see is just a soldier and he's pointing his rifle at probably a captive, a soldier that was um, caught. And you can see how the, the other soldier who was being very nice, giving water, is omitted. So we end up by just having some violent soldier pointing a rifle at the head of um, a soldier or a captive. And here you can see how, you know, news outlets, they can direct you towards what they want to show you. So if they want to show you like really nice, um, gentle soldiers helping captives, they will show you the extreme right. If the photo on the extreme right. If they want to show you that these soldiers are mistreating their captives, they will show you the one on the extreme left, the one that is reddish. And here you can gives you an idea how we can um, direct public opinion. We can we can like uh, um, influence what people think about you know the, the the camps fighting in a war. The second picture, this is also uh, part of my study. Um, so you can see in that picture the different news outlets or the news channels um, based on their political and ideological orientations. So you can see on the left L, so some news channels are considered on the left, some C on the center, some on the right. Okay. Um, to continue with this, I would like to show you, for example, um, an example from my study, from my research. So let's look at these examples. These are real concrete examples um, of news translation. So usually news outlets, they, you know, they translate news coming from different parts of the world. As I said, it can be speeches, it can be statements, it can be uh, communiques. Um, so all these be, will be translated by certain news outlets towards other languages. So let's look at the first example. So this is this took place. Um, this is in reference to the uh, carnage um, that took place um, in New Zealand, where um, a couple of uh, worshippers were um, shot in a mosque in New Zealand. So this example is about a tweet by the um, the chief of the Conservative Party um, in Canada, uh, Andrew Scheer. This is what he tweeted um, just after the attack. 
So you can see here um, in English, um, the original text or the text that, that he posted on Twitter was originally in English. So he said, freedom has come under attack in New Zealand as peaceful worshippers are targeted in a despicable act of evil. All people must be able to practice their faith freely and without fear. Now, the second part that you see on the slide, that's the translation towards French done by the news outlet EC Radio Canada. So here the French translation, La liberté a été attaquée en Nouvelle-Zélande alors que des fidèles ont été la cible d'un acte de terreur horrible. We can see here the expression act de terreur or a terror act didn't exist in the first text. It didn't exist in the English text, the original text. But in the translation done by ICI Radio Canada, we have something was added, right? Was added to the to the original text, which is the act of terror. So Andrew Scheer in the original text, he didn't call it, he didn't call the attack a terror act. But in the translation of the of the news outlet ICI Radio Canada, an expression was added. This is an this is an example of addition. So here it shows you how news outlets can change realities. Here, the original reality was, it wasn't a terrorist attack. It wasn't a terror attack. It was just a despicable act of evil. What the news outlet, during the translation or through the translation, what they have done, they have changed it from a despicable act of evil into an act of terror. And if we link that to the political reality, what happened was an act of terror, right? Because it aimed at terrorizing people based on religion, based on political and ideological purposes. And so here we see how the news outlets can change realities. Huh? So they can create a new reality through translation. Um, the second example I have in the next slide is based on the on the crisis on the war now in Syria where we have anti-Assad people who are, who are fighting the president of Syria they are rebels they are they don't like him they are against him and one of these groups um, had an interview or the leader of one of those rebellious groups had an interview with the Daily Beast and you can see here um, in the source text which was in English it was translated the the the, the the statements of the rebel commander, Zaharan Alush, was translated into Arabic by a news outlet that is pro-rebels, that likes the rebels, that supports the rebels. And you can see here the part in red, accusation that he's just another dictator in Islamic garb, how it was omitted, and then we have a substitution. So it was omitted and we brought something different, which is the word democracy, as you see in the Arabic version, it's highlighted in, in, in yellow. So when, when this commander was asked about the future of Syria and the accusation that he's just a dictator, you know, the, Arab, the Arabic translation done by this channel or this news outlet that is pro-rebels, that likes the rebels, it substituted that accusation of being a dictator with democracy. So the guy, so basically in, in other words, Zahran al-Lush, the, the, the rebel commander here of Damascus, um, he's talking about democracy and the future of Syria. So he's no longer being accused of being a dictator. So you can see here how the, these news outlets ha are changing realities based on their interests. Hmm? So this gives you an idea of what is my, what am I studying? So I study how these news outlets um, are translating speeches, political communiques, um, any kind of news coming from the Middle East, which is produced originally in Arabic. And then when you're here living in Canada, for example, you're reading the news, for example, on EC Radio Canada, whether in French or on CBC. So what you're reading there about the Middle East, most of it has been translated into English from Arabic. And think about it. What are you reading on CBC has been translated? right? So that's what I do, actually. So I look at how the CBC translated news from Arabic to English and see if there are changes taking place during the translation. 
I hope you enjoyed this. This is I hope it it's it's beneficial and it uh, gave you an idea about what I do exactly in my studies now. Thank you. Have a good day.